Dear students, this class is going to be the continuation of the previous two classes namely family as an institution and marriage as an institution. In this class we are going to study kinship as a form of social institution. Kinship system is found to be a part of social structure. The bond of blood or marriage which binds people together in groups is called kinship. The concept of kinship is vitally important in anthropology. According to W. R. H. Rivers, kinship is the social organization of biological ties. R. H. Louis describes kinship as a rod on which person learns throughout his life. The kinship terms offer a great bond of unity and are of considerable social value in this society. Functions of kinship. Kinship systems are found to vary in different societies with respect to a number of characteristics. They are as follows. The extent to which genealogical and affinal relationships are recognized for social processes. The second one is the way in which relatives so recognized are classified or grouped in social categories. 3. The particular customs by which the behavior of the relatives is regulated in daily life. The fourth one, the rights and obligations are mediated through kinship only. 5. The linguistic forms are used to denote the various categories of kin. The patterns of behavior that prevail between relatives define their relationships and as such are an integral part of the kinship system. There is considerable evidence that in most societies children learn the essentials of kinship rather very early. At marriage an individual normally acquires a whole new set of affinal relatives to whom he or she must make varying adjustments depending on the patterns of residence and interaction. Marriage is an alliance between two groups of kin and may be mediated by exchange of property as well as of spouses. The rights and obligations of members are channeled through the kinship system. Succession to various offices or status positions usually depend on kinship even though the offices are controlled by the decent groups or associations. Even the rights to residence in one locality or another may be specified in kinship terms. Rights normally imply obligations or duties. There is a basic logic to kinship terminology in which a particular term does not imply a status position so much as the relationship. For example, when a person calls his mother as mother, it is not simply the status being referred to, but also it refers to the closeness of these two persons. The use of a particular term implies its reciprocal relationship also. 
the same example could be taken again. If I call a person as my mother, then you will easily understand that I am the daughter of that person and she is my mother. So, the relationship of the other person is also implied when we use a particular terminology. Kinship system performs two important functions for the well-being of the society. These are as follows, vertical function. The vertical function provides social continuity by binding together successive generations. Kinship systems are directly involved with passing on education, tradition, property and political office from one generation to the next. The second one is horizontal function. Horizontal function tend to solidify or tie together a society horizontally that is across single generation through a process of marriage. Kinship systems define the local kin group outside of which people must take a spouse. Therefore, groups are forced to enter into alliances with other kinship groups thereby creating solidarity within much larger society. At this point again an example could be quoted. In the earlier class we were talking about village exogamy. In this, the society prescribes marriages by taking a mate from the next village, not within the same village. By doing this, village A is now closely related to the village B. This happens through the process of marriage. Next, we will see kinship usages. The study of kinship system is not only concerned with the description of various kinds of kins and the basis for their classification, but it also includes the study of behavior patterns of different kin. Every relationship involves a particular type of behavior or usage. This behavior is found to be either verbal or nonverbal. Kinship usages serve two main purposes. Firstly, they create groups or special groupings or kin group. For example, family, extended family, clan and other such groupings. Secondly, the kinship rules govern the role relationships among the kins. Kinship usage provides guidelines for interaction among persons in these social groupings. It defines proper and acceptable role relationships. Thus, kinship usages are found to be the regulator of social life. The kinship relations are regulated according to usages prevalent in the society. Some of these usages are avoidance, Technonomy, avunculate, amitate, kuwait, and joking relationship. First, I will explain what we mean by avoidance. Avoidance of one kind or the other is observed in all forms of societies. In almost all societies, avoidance rules prescribe that men and women must maintain certain amount of modesty in dress, speech, gesture and behavior. For example, in some societies, even the husband and wife are not supposed to touch each other or show affection in the presence of others. Similarly, the Hindu wife is not supposed to call her husband by his name. Father-in-law should avoid daughter-in-law. Likewise, the son-in-law must avoid his mother-in-law and other female relatives of his wife. This is called avoidance. 
this kind of avoidance has some important functions. By avoiding certain kind of close relationship between two different uh, persons, some kind of uh, clash and differences of opinion are avoided in the family life. And these are some of the examples. The second one is joking relationship. Joking relationship is a kind of uh, deliberate relationship. It involves a relation which requires people to be friendly and exchange jokes which might minimize tensions arising between them. The relationship between a man and his wife's younger sister, a woman and her husband's younger brother and a man and his maternal uncle's daughter come under this category. Such relationships may amount to exchange of abuse, vulgar references to sex between them and so on. Insult and obscenity are permitted in joking relationship. Joking relationship is almost the opposite of avoidance. In the case of avoidance, the relatives try to avoid each other for certain reasons. But in joking relationship, the relationship becomes very close and intimate by way of making jokes on each other. The next kind of usage is technonomy. According to this usage, a person is referred to or addressed to as the father or the mother of his or her child. This is known as technonomy. A person is identified through another person in this usage. For instance, sometimes we refer to a person as Kamala's father, Ramu's mother. So, here the name of the father and the mother is not directly used, but they are referred to as mother or father of a particular person. This shows a kind of respect to the person and the relationship. The next type of usage I am going to explain is avanculate. This refers to the special relationship that persists in some societies between a man and his mother's brother. In some mat matrilineal societies, the avanculate pattern of residence whereby a man and woman after marriage live with or near the husband's mother's brother. In some matrilineal societies, the avanculocal pattern of residence whereby a man and woman after marriage live with or even near by the husband's mother's brother. In this type, mother's brother plays an important role in decision making. Amitate. Amitate is a usage which gives special role to the father's sister. Here the father's sister is given more respect than the mother. Both avanculate and amitate prevail in all forms of societies. Only thing is, at different occasions, uh, the usage of avanculate and amitate uh, get priority. The next type of usage is Kuwait. Kuwait is a peculiar form of uh, usage which is found among tribal people. Kuwait is a peculiar practice whereby husband is required to imitate the process of pregnancy and all the behavior pattern that is followed by his wife at the time of pregnancy. This he performs for the sake of their ch child's welfare. The husband leads an inactive life and imitates the taboos 
which the wife is supposed to follow in connection with the childbirth. The husband is expected to follow the dietary habits of his pregnant wife. Kuwait is a mark of love between the husband and wife. It makes the husband involved in the behavior pattern of his wife during her pregnancy. I have been explaining to you certain type of usages of kinship. Apart from these usages, there is one more kind of relationship that prevail in all forms of societies which is totally different from the blood or marital relationship. It is called pseudo kinship. Pseudo kinship includes the relationships in which persons are described or addressed by the kin terms, but they do not stand in such a relationship by virtue of the principles. However, they happen to be conceptualized of descent or marriage. Pseudo kinship can be distinguished as three types. They are 1. All figurative usages of kin terms which may be little more than a convention of speech or which may on the other hand designate a status within the society or within a specific context. B. There are also customs whereby a person is given a status of kin by attribution rather than by birth and this is commonly called fictive or artificial kinship. And see, there are also institutions which resemble kinship. Some examples of pseudo kinship are godfather, foster mother and also sometimes friends call each other on some kinship terms. Apart from these usages, there are two more important concepts relating to kinship. They are decent and lineage. Decent, the relation of a person with his ancestors is called as decent. Decent refers to the culturally established affiliation with one or both parents. Anthropologists mean those groups of consanguinal kins who are lineal descendants of a common ancestor extending beyond two generations as called descent group. Robin Fox says that all the members of a kin group who have a common ancestor are known as a descent group. A descent group is a common and most accepted way of organizing a society along kinship lines. The next one is lineage. The simplest type of unilineal group is known as lineage. The universal descent group composed of all those consanguineous kin to whom ego can trace an actual genealogical tie is called the lineage. Lineages may often designated by the name of common ancestor or ancestress. Within lineage there are two types, one is unilineal and another is bilineal. They are also called as unilateral and bilateral. In the case of unilateral, the relationship is always traced from one side, either from father's side or from mother's side. But in the case of bilateral, the relationship of both father and mother are important. Now, I will pose few questions to you students. The first question, what are the functions of kinship? Question 2, explain various kinds of kinship usages with examples. Okay, students.
I am sure that this class on kinship was very interesting to you and it taught you many things about kinship. In this class, I talked to you about kinship, some definitions, characteristic features and the functions of kinship and also I explained some forms of usages of kinship. The next class we will see few more institutions that are found to be important in our social life.